Hey guys, if you've been on social media in the past few days, you've probably seen chatter about the documentary Plandemic, the hidden agenda behind COVID-19. Now don't worry if you haven't because Ayana and I are gonna give you everything you need to know about it right here. When we first saw the 26 minute video on YouTube, it had over a million views, but YouTube has since taken down the initial video and multiple re-uploads. And by the time you watch this, it probably will have been taken down and re-uploaded even more. But none of this has stopped the conversation. There's a Reddit thread about it with nearly a thousand comments, and it's still making its rounds on Facebook conspiracy theory groups and on Twitter. Our friends over at PolitiFact already watched and fact checked the video, so you don't have to. And now we're going to talk about some of the top claims that came from Plandemic. According to the movie's website, it claims to be humanity's chance to stand for free speech and integrity in all sectors. But it turns out there's a lot about the documentary that's misleading. If you want to get to the bottom of these false claims, then keep on watching. Let's go check them out. Okay, so before we get started, here's a little more background on Plandemic. It goes in-depth into a bunch of conspiracy theories about COVID-19, public health, and the pharmaceutical industry. It talks about Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and his efforts to combat the AIDS epidemic in the 80s. The film was produced by Elevate, a California production company run by Mickey Willis. Many of the videos on his YouTube channel are similar in that they highlight conspiracy theories. In Plandemic, he interviews Dr. Judy Mikovits. She's a former scientist at the National Cancer Institute. Back in the late 2000s, she was celebrated for her research on chronic fatigue syndrome. This, of course, was before her work was discredited. In the video, she makes several claims that are either unsupported or just straight up false. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's start with our first claim. FYI, we're not talking about every claim PolitiFact checked but you can read the full story at the link in the description. Mikovic says, It's very clear this virus was manipulated. These, this family of viruses was manipulated and studied in a laboratory where the animals were taken into the laboratory. And this is what was released, whether deliberate or not. But when fact checked, it's proven that the genetic structure of the coronavirus rules out laboratory manipulation. A Nature article published on March 17 says the genetic makeup of the coronavirus does not indicate it was altered. Instead, scientists have two more reasonable explanations for the origin of the virus. Either natural selection in the animal host or natural selection in humans after the virus jumped from animals. Now on to claim number two. It's effective against these families of viruses. As of today, May 8th, 2020, there is no known cure or vaccine for SARS or the coronavirus. Now, don't get me wrong, there has been research that found that hydroxychloroquine could ease some of the COVID-19 symptoms but there's also been conflicting research with that. Right now, there are more than 50 studies in the works and an NIH clinical trial that could give us more answers, but it's really too soon to say whether the drug is a viable treatment for coronavirus. And this isn't the first time we've heard claims about this particular drug being a good treatment. Hey, heaven. Didn't we do a fact check on this? Kinda. We fact checked whether chloroquine, a drug used to treat malaria, could cure COVID-19. This was around the time that President Trump was hyping up hydroxychloroquine and suggested it might be the solution to the COVID problem. After that, people everywhere were talking about it. So be sure to click the link in our description to watch that fact check. These next few claims really surprise me because a lot of people I know get the flu shot every year. The first one says the flu vaccines increase the odds by 36% of getting COVID-19. The next one says if you've ever had a flu vaccine, you were injected with coronaviruses. This isn't true. The study Mikovits cites doesn't support this statement. First and foremost, the study took place before the COVID-19 pandemic and scientists have realized that there are flaws in the experimental design. The number of vaccinated subjects was more than twice as large as the number of unvaccinated subjects. Lastly, the study never says that the flu vaccine increased the odds of getting coronavirus by 36%. When watching videos like this, it's important to take a second and ask yourself, is this factual before you decide to share? And finally, we've reached the last claim we're going to talk about today, and it's that wearing the mask literally activates your own virus. You're getting sick from your own reactivated coronavirus expressions. What? This would mean that the millions of people in the U.S. alone who are following the CDC guidelines by wearing masks are endangering themselves. Well, I've got good news. There's no evidence to support this. 
In fact, we're not even sure what a coronavirus expression is. The CDC is advising anyone who goes out in public to wear a mask because it can take up to 14 days for an infected person to show symptoms and masks can prevent the spread through coughs and sneezes. Put simply, wearing a face mask prevents the spread of coronavirus. It does not make you more susceptible to it. Take it from an expert, Richard Peltier is an assistant professor of environmental health sciences at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. He told PolitiFact in an email that wearing a mask simply catches the droplets before they reach our mouth or nose. It isn't rocket science and Dr. Mikovic should know that. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks for sticking with us. Did you like this video? Should we do more like this? Let us know in the comments down below. We didn't talk about every single claim PolitiFact addressed in their story, so be sure to read it in full at the link in our description. And remember to keep in mind that just because something looks official or high quality doesn't mean the information shared in it is accurate. This video is a prime example. It's got a decent production value, slick editing, and a whole website. So remember to seek out trusted sources and to always be skeptical.